I'm not much for unboxing, so I did just want to show that it came packaged very well. Just wanted to brag on how well the packaging was. When I opened it up and everything was, was inside the packaging very well. So the manual that comes with the ADS M302. So just looking at some of the basic specs. The image sensor is a three megapixel HD sensor. Video output is full HD 1080p. The video format, if you record, is MOV. Your magnification ratio is up to 560x. And it shows HDMI monitor of 22 inches. I do have a 24 inch um, that I have hooked up to mine. Photo resolution of 12 meg. The format is JPEG. Give us our focus range of 5 to 22 centimeters. Our frame rate, 30 frames per second. And our video output um, interface is HDMI. It's actually the, the mini. It actually takes the, uh, the mini HDMI. Storage is up to a 32 gig micro SD card, which I will be uh, inserting in mine in the next few minutes. I do have a 32 gig micro. Says it does have PC support for Windows XP 7, 8, 10. The power source being five volts at two amps. And it actually comes with the adapter and the, um, the actual cable for that. It's got some dimensions on the stand size, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Screen size is five inches. And tell us about the uh, accessories comes with the stand, the power adapter, the cable, HDMI cable, the manual, and the IR controller. So this remote that can control it. Just shows some of the layout of the parts. On the next page, we see the remote controller and the layout for the buttons on the remote. So here we go. This is the microscope. We can tilt the screen all the way up and it goes down that far. What I have under here just for a reference, um, I was just interested to see how deep I could look inside of this little AMD AM2716DC. We can go on in a little deeper. Cut it off before I put my card in. We'll power it down. I'm actually gonna put my 32 gig card in until it clicks in. So I'll record a little bit of this video, hit OK. And we start recording, we see our red light blink. I'll record some of this and have it up in a split screen or, or picture in picture. One thing that's a little bit interesting about this AMD chip, there's a little bit of an Easter egg there. This little jewel of screwdriver just looks enormous on that air. But we see them little bitty fine hair-like bond wires just going to the actual gates and logic. 
the logic gates on the chip, all the transistors and registers. If we look over here, <laughs> I can't even point good. If we look over towards this corner, it looks like AMD copyright 1980. And the chip did say copyright 1979. So this must have been made after 1980 though. And a little bit more of an Easter egg. If we look a little more hidden, it's a part number, I guess, for the actual uh, chip itself. It's actually, instead of horizontal, it's written vertically right there. At least that's that little uh, board number. Now I'm just going to hook up my HDMI output cable. And actually I can switch, I can switch from my overhead camera view um, to the actual microscope and back. So, so I flip to the uh, microscope. I do like having a 24 inch uh, display in front of me. It's, it's not too big to take up too much of the bench, but it's actually a, a good size to, uh, to have to help troubleshoot. One thing to note about going to a monitor output is unfortunately you can't video record while it's going to HDMI output. That is a bit disappointing, but it's the only negative side that I found with this uh, microscope at all. I can still hit the snapshot. It does take the still shot photo. I can do it there or with the remote. I do wish I could look up and work and record what I was looking at at the same time and unfortunately I can't. So that's why sometimes I set this camera up to be able to see what I'm working on and what I'm looking at. With the 24 inch monitor, it's still big enough to be almost as good as the picture in picture. Still working out the details on that, but the camera's been just extremely um, useful and helpful in troubleshooting. Just so handy to have for um, surface mount electronics in general. As we look at an example board here, you can see a lot of fine details on the circuit board. We can also see how well it focuses. It don't have the um, the best field of view, but it does it does focus in on the depth very well from the from the tip of that pin to the connector itself and on down below it at the board level. Very very um, convenient to have with electronics, small devices. We go back to this chip. We can even focus on the surface, which we see. We can even see the outside bubbles around the lens or around the um, resin. We can see the chips. Some of it is actually dust. But some, some of that, if we look on deeper, is like bubbles. It's like actually bubbles in the process on the surface there. And of course, we can go on deeper to where the bond wires are. And even deeper still, to the chip itself. So with my Google Pixel 2, we look at the OLED display. It's, it's kind of interesting. Record some of this. I can definitely see our that red, blue, and green. And we got a different focus uh, focal pattern there. We see when we back up, it's actually white, or at least a light gray. But as we go on beneath the surface, we start seeing some layers there. We start seeing our colors. Anyway. It's kind of interesting. We see that our blacks can get really black with an OLED and like an LCD. What we zoomed in there in the OLED display is, is actually um, part of my sine wave on my um, YouTube channel because there's the logo with the different shades of white or gray. The working height is uh, it's sufficient for doing uh, a lot of work so right there all the way up I 
almost five inches of work height and on some videos where I just wanted a wider view than it could give me here I actually did take these screws off these three screws and carefully brought it up a little bit further so I have even done that I probably went to six and a half or seven inches um, if, if I needed to I could do it and just um, just extend this slide just a little bit more So overall, it's a really good quality camera. I do like the uh, the lights come with it. It's the two LED lights with the with the USB adapter and the, the on-off control and the brightness control. So just putting the lights out so you can uh, you can see them and dim them down, brighten them up. So that does help. Good lighting control is good. You can maneuver them wherever you need to. I really like that. The HD out is very nice. I do wish it record with it, but still, just going out to the monitor where I can work and look up on a big monitor. You could even do a large TV screen if you desire to. It's, it's really handy. The buttons across the top are as follows. You got your power, your on off, your menu, up and down. Yeah, okay, which you saw we also use for our video capture. And then we actually have our capture for our um, photo. The focus controller's got a good feel to it. The actual object table or base is, is very well made. It's got good rubber boots on it. It's thick, it's heavy. You don't have to worry about it trying to fall over easy. The display is nice. I work with it as well, just looking straight at the display when I first got it before I had the monitor uh, and all hooked up. And it's still nice to have it right there in front of you, being able to see it well. Of course, it has a lock on the back of the slide. I may or may not have mentioned that um, the light controller also has the ability to come up and plug up and actually powers the unit. So you don't have to have a lot of cables. Your HDMI if you need it, and just one uh, USB cable for power does the lights and the camera. It does not have a battery like the little cheap camera did, but um, I don't really have that much of a need for the battery, so it's not a big deal. I just like it working and it hadn't given me any trouble, no froze video or, or anything yet. So I really like it. So once again, I won't elaborate on it. I will put the remote out and just show how you can do your, your menu. You stop your image on the screen, you can freeze it. It can be a standby, record, capture mode. You can actually do your digital zoom up to four times with this remote. You can change your sharpness, contrast. There's a lot of things you can do with the remote. So this is what the watch actually looks like in my hand was just in all of the uh, the craftsmanship and, and workmanship, like I say, of the, the craftsman who made the watch and designed the watch. So I took a few pictures of it with the camera. Look at the detail and the different depths of the gears and the uh, the different parts in the watch. As, uh, as you notice the difference in the depths of the focuses, you'll see the different gears that's on down deeper into the watch itself and then on the surface of the actual watch. So. So today I know I didn't go in great detail. Time just got away from me on the review, but um, I hope you've seen how helpful the little camera can be on the bench, and it just has so many uses. And like I mentioned, especially trying to do the uh, the surface mount and small electronic, it really helps a lot. Just something I don't want to go without having on the bench again. So if you're interested in this little microscope for a price point, just a little over $200 at the time of this video, please see the description down below. If you like the review of this microscope, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.